YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from doing film things. So as you already know, I've been shooting a ton with this camera right here. This is the Canon 7 rangefinder with the 50 millimeter 0.95 dream lens. And basically this lens has been kind of an interesting device to play with. Um, I've got an intro video up above here that you can check out if you want to see kind of my initial thoughts. But now I've actually been messing around with this lens a bit more and I've shot uh, quite a few photos to try to test out its capabilities and see if I can kind of get a handle for it. Um, long story short, it's definitely been a challenge and focusing is not easy with this lens. So let's actually jump in and take a look at the best photo I think I've gotten with this lens. So this particular image that I'm showing you right here is basically a portrait and it has one eye in focus. And I mentioned that very specifically because that's kind of the only thing you're ever going to get in focus if you do portraits with this lens. Um, especially if you're very up close, if you're kind of at the minimum focal distance, you're going to have trouble getting more than just an eye or nose or something just that minimal in focus. Bef uh, in front of that and behind that, it's definitely going to start to get blurry very fast. And that's where you're going to start to notice the bokeh and kind of the softness. Um, so this lens is very hard to use because getting that focus on that very specific thing is a very slow process and you really have to pay attention. So in this portrait, I've got the left eye in focus here. And if you focus on that eye, pun intended, you can kind of get a, a sense for how much depth of field you'll get um, when you're using this lens wide open. And the depth of field is just not very much. It's very, very minuscule. The left eye here is about as sharp as you're going to get. And then the right eye, you can immediately notice some softness. And typically, if you use any other lens, you shoot at 1.2, one, 1.4, one, or even 2.8, um, and obviously higher than that, you're going to have so much in focus in someone's face. With this lens, you get one eye, and that's basically all you're going to get. But what I really love here, though, is this lens actually created a very dramatic bokeh behind the subject. If I were to ask you where this image was taken, what would you say? Tell me in the comments right now, actually. Where do you think this image was taken? What is the scene? Where am I when I took this photo? Well, here's the answer. I was actually on an escalator coming up from the tube here in London. And that's why you see all the lights, kind of the, the tungsten interior lights, and you see those lines kind of converging downwards. That's all because we're coming up the escalator and that's kind of what you see those leading lines. So it's interesting how this lens really transformed that scene because you can't even tell where you are. Um, I am curious if some of you guessed it, but ultimately the beauty of this lens is that it can take scenes like this and just completely mess with them and, and turn them into something very abstract, kind of artsy, let's say. Um, some people might like that, some might not, but that's definitely kind of the point of using this lens if you're going to shoot wide open. Um, if you're trying to shoot in other ways, if you're trying to shoot at 2.8 or even higher than that in terms of um, f-stop, you probably shouldn't even bother getting this lens. You can get the cheaper kind of other models that will still give you beautiful bokeh if you shoot wide open, let's say at 1.4 or something, but you won't have to pay all this extra money just so you can go down to 0.95. So it's kind of the beauty of this lens. You have to decide whether that matters to you or not. Yo, real quick, don't forget, I just debuted a podcast. It's called the New Classic Film Photography Podcast. Go on my Instagram or go on the Instagram for New Classic Film, and you can learn more about it there. Right now, we're on the web and on Spotify, but Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts are coming soon. So go check it out. I've got some great guests already, and we got a whole bunch more cool guests coming in the next couple weeks. I want to look at some other photos here. Basically, I want to compare kind of what you would get when you shoot wide open as compared to what you get when you stop down just a bit. So in these two images that you see right here, it's the same photo taken kind of, you know, a couple seconds apart. The image on the right was shot at night at 0.95. So as you can see tons of softness and kind of very blurry for the most part. And then the image on the left was shot at 2.8 and there's a lot more detail, even though you still get that bokeh in the background. Um, very immediate thing that kind of sticks out is the image on the right shot at 0.095. Um, I obviously miss focus. I think I was aiming here for either the headlight or the Cadillac emblem. And the thing that's in focus here is the license plate. And it's interesting because the license plate is quote unquote in focus, but you can see how soft that is. And I think there's an obvious reason for that. And that's that the license plate is down towards the corner. And with lenses like these, when you're shooting wide open, you're going to get a lot of softness and even vignetting in those corners. So it's not really fair to judge by that. But the point is I miss focus here. Um, the image on the left, that shot at 2.8 and you can see there's so much more stuff in focus. The depth of field has increased just enough to really catch the depth to include the license plate, the emblem and the headlights. So it's a very dramatic difference when you shoot wide open versus, you know, stop down even just two stops. It makes a big difference there and you get so much more information in focus. So I'm starting to realize what the problem is here in terms of when I'm shooting these images. Obviously the lens is not easy to use, but more importantly, I think my range finder needs to be calibrated because basically when I shoot wide open or when I'm shooting somewhere in kind of that more open end of the spectrum, um, anything that I try to focus on and I align the range finder patch on, 
just in front of it is going to be in focus. And I think that's what happened here. As you can see on the image, I was trying to focus on the Cadillac emblem, but then the license plate is in focus. So I'm pretty sure that that was a consistent pattern that I saw in other places. We can look at some more images here. Uh, these, are, these are more images of this car. And basically um, the image on the left is the actual 0.95 shot and the image on the right is 2.8. On the image on the left, you can see that I'm trying to focus on the car obviously, and that's out of focus. But then towards the bottom left of the image, you actually see where there is a bit of leaves that are, are in focus. And again, I laugh here because technically they're in focus. I'd say that's where the focal point is for that particular image, but it's not sharp. You know, it doesn't look that much in focus. And that's because again, it's, up over, it's over to the corners and it's gonna be very soft there regardless. Um, so just imagine the potential. If I were to nail the focus here, you would have crazy bokeh in front of the car and then behind it as well. Really starts to put you in that four by five kind of territory where in four by five, even when you're shooting at um, more closed apertures like 4.5 or 5.6 or even F8, you see this extremely dramatic depth of field that is not only dramatic in kind of its look, but then the angle of it and kind of the in front and behind is just really, really interesting. I think that's most evident in this last image that I'm gonna show you here of this Christmas tree. So again, I missed focus, but you can tell if you look at the floor that the floor in front of the tree is actually in focus. So I think again, that's why this rangefinder needs to be calibrated to account for that problem but just imagine here if i did nail the focus on the tree think about all the bokeh in front and all the bokeh behind this is very four by five like four by five when you shoot um with wide lenses you'll see that there's really good bokeh even though you're shooting a wide lens and i think that's kind of what this gives me in terms of the look i feel like you get so much more information if you back away from your subject and you're still going to get that very very dramatic bokeh especially if you kind of angle it just a bit so it's really interesting how artsy, quote unquote, you can get with this lens. And it's not for everybody. You know, it's a pain to use, it's big and heavy, and it costs a lot of money. And of course, the look and the bokeh is its own kind of thing. If you want something different, if you want something more efficient, more practical, something that's a bit more predictable, then this is definitely not the lens you want to go with. But you're starting to see here kind of what these images can look like in different scenarios, whether you're very much up close at the minimum focusing distance of about three feet, or if you back up a bit and kind of get a bit more of that environmental portrait um, setup going. So let me know in the comments, which image of these did you think was your favorite? Were you impressed by the first image where you have the eye in focus and then everything else is just thrown out of focus? Um, I think that image is impressive to me, not from a technical, like I did a good job, but just in terms of the capability of this lens. So tell me, you think it's worth it? What are your thoughts about this lens and these images? All right, y'all, that's what I got for this week. I'm actually gonna do a head-to-head -head challenge with this lens where I'm gonna put this lens against another very kind of regarded Canon lens that everybody loves and, and appreciates that bokeh for. So I'm not gonna tell you any more information about that just now because I want it to be a surprise, but look out for that in the next, I'd say two, three weeks or so. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please go ahead and like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Until the next video, y'all, peace.